Initially, we thought about running a panel uh, like uh, we had last year, but we thought maybe this was a bit uh, more boring, and we try, try to decided to change a little bit the, the format. I'd like to thank uh, Paul Weiss. Uh, he's been working with me, trying to make up this presentation, but uh, I'll be presenting this. So I'm, I'm Hector Oron Martinez, for the ones you don't know me. And I work for Collabora, which is a consultant company that uh, su supplies uh, yeah, uh, consulting services. So what I would like to discuss today, I'd like to do a summary of what last year was discussed in the panel. So why, why Debian or why not Debian? Why do you need a derivative instead of using Debian instead? Or how can, how can we make Debian, uh, how can we improve Debian from uh, derivative from point of view and the other way around? I'll try to go uh, really quick through all this. And then I'd like to present the new derivatives that joined during 2015, 2016. And uh, then we'll have some slot that I'll be presenting, some derivatives I'm working on. And in the audience, there's other people running derivatives. If they want to have a word, present their, their derivatives, uh, you're welcome to. And then we want to present like a a proposal of an idea to create a reference derivative so we can somehow standardize in the tools that we use to build derivatives because there are well many tools to do different things and some people trying to run new derivatives uh, if they have some reference then that would be that would be good so uh, why do people base on Debian for derivatives? Is uh, Debian is an excellent platform. It's stable. It has a lot of packages. There's a lot of QA through them. It just works. So Debian is an excellent pick to, to run a, a derivative. It has also a multiple architecture support. So you might not care about Intel, but other platforms. So Debian is a really nice choice. So why, why not Debian? Why do you need a derivative for? Well, there is uh, some software which is special. It cannot be uh, in Debian because the licensing. Or maybe you, have a, you run a web application which needs some dependencies. You cannot um, uh, uh, have those in Debian easily. Or maybe you want to drop some architectures and go faster on your development than Debian because Debian needs to keep up with too, too much uh, arch architectures and packages and dependencies and we cannot, Debian cannot go as fast as mm, what the derivative might need. Also the release cycle of Debian might not be adequate. So maybe you want to have a cadence of its release, it's, it's three months or, so, or things like that or you want to have a latest upstream so you can uh, contribute, or maybe just your default configuration in Debian is not suitable and you want to change the defaults of many packages. So uh, what can we do in Debian to make uh, derivatives life easy? So as a Debian developers, we can coordinate uploads. Like um, sometimes he, there's somebody uploads a package and Debian does a transition, but the derivative doesn't notice, doesn't pick it up, and breaks the whole thing in the derivative side. So um, maybe it would be also good to declare what, what versions we are thinking on to, for the release. Uh, having reproducible builds, dealing with uh, trademark issues, um, testing the backports builds, uh, then it would be nice to notify derivatives that Debian has removed a package as well because sometimes derivatives don't notice and then after two years, there's, what is this package? There, there's no updates. So uh, improving testing by not, not breaking it and improving the documentation, wiki, and so on. 
So the talk, I wanted to center more into the infrastructure for uh, working with derivatives. So go ahead. Well, yeah, what, what can derivatives do, can do to help to improve Debian? So if you run a derivative, uh, it would be really helpful if you join the census the, we have in a, in a wiki page in, in the wiki debian.org and keep that information up to date. Uh, you may send patches to the VTS and sometimes there are patches that are specific for the certain derivative. So those, those lines of code would be nice if it that's, gets into some kind of conditional, like if, for example, GCC builds for Ubuntu, then they apply different patch, patch set. So that's in a conditional way. So it's, do we have the package vendor or ways to, or LSB release? Or I think there's three or four ways that you can detect which distribution you are in. So depending which distribution you're running, you can apply different combination of patches or configurations. So in that way, you can send these patches to, to the BTS and then maintainers be able to merge them. So if you have uh, new packages which are not in Debian, then uploading those to mentors, so some, some developer might review, that would be helpful. Uh, come to DevConf, that would be also, and uh, be active on mailing lists. You run a derivative. So these are some of the derivatives that uh, join the census in 2015-2016. I think H Linux joined by the end of 2014, but like some people is here and we added there at the list and they'll be doing a presentation later today. There is also uh, Kali Linux, which they are doing some presentation, I think in this room after this, this talk. And I'll be presenting some, some of the derivatives I do. So I work at Collabora and I'm involved with uh, these derivatives. So Apertis is an automotive derivative to have Debian running in, a, in the multimedia displays of the cars, which used to be the radio, the radio system in the car then now, nowadays it's quite complicated and it has a lot of multimedia resources. You have video, you have audio, Bluetooth, and we integrate all that and provide middleware. And then we allow manufacturers give all the libraries, the manufacturers create their UI. So they, they are working on the same uh, middleware, but they have different UIs on the, on the car. So that's, we recently added Apertis, but we've been running this derivative for over four years now. And, and then Stimos is a, is a game, it's, it's, it's done by Valve, which is also sponsoring uh, DevConf, and they, it's a game um, OS. It's, it's made to run games. So they, they have a runtime to keep compatibility for, for games. They keep the same libraries that's frozen, they don't touch that, but that runtime runs over AOS, which is uh, Stimos, and it's based on Debian as well. And then Endless, Endless Mobile is a company based in San Francisco, and they, they're building devices to enable uh, third world uh, countries, like they think they're putting a lot of effort in, in Guatemala, and they want to enable, uh, they want to short the technolo technology bridge between first and third world countries. So they are going into these class classrooms of developed, un underdeveloped countries and set up their devices and then the, the kids can have uh, a machine. So they, they're doing quite nice modification. Their software stack is based on GNOM. So they have, a, they forked the GNOME shell and created what they call EOS shell, endless shell. So it's very easy and intuitive for 
for people to get started running on a, a computer which they haven't had the chance to, to play with. And they, they also use, use some updating um, software based on OS3 and things like that because the network connectivity is not so reliable. So that, that gives more uh, better stability on the upgrading their machines and things like that. So it's, they're doing quite a nice, nice job. So uh, we have to ke keep in mind that from Debian, we have a Stimos. And then from a Stimos, there's a Stevenson rocket. And from a Stevenson rocket, there's Vapor OS. So we have derivatives of derivatives. So the thing is growing, and the family is going, is going more uh, far, farther away than we might think. So we all, we all start in Debian. So contributing to Debian, you ensure that many many derivative lines will pick up the, your fixes. So, um, so he, I know here in the audience there's uh, some people running derivatives. So you may want to, to have a word on your derivative. I added some of the logos, some of the people that I know here, they're here. So if you you ha want to have a word, you, you're welcome. If not, I'll, yeah. Microphone? Yeah, microphone. So I'm starting the round just to help other people to speak because I won't say much because if you want to hear about Kali Linux, you should stay in this room. I will give a presentation <coughs> just afterwards. Uh, it's but basically it's a pen presentation with derivatives, and uh, I explain all the infrastructure that we have set up, and I also speak of uh, the challenge we have because we are based <coughs> on Debian testing, so there are some downsides and some, some positive sides, and I speak about those as well. So I hope you will stay. And if you have questions for me, uh, I'm free to. Uh, Feel free to ask them. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, this this is go was going to be a panel, but and have some of the derivative people here, and maybe have some discussion with the audience. But maybe audience become the derivative people, and maybe I'm trying to kind of have a Debian derivative hat, and maybe try to centralize all the derivative carries and try to support derivatives better from a Debian point of view. So in that line, uh, we come up with an idea of uh, do, doing a reference derivative, trying to standardize a common set of tools. So maybe some new deriv derivative want to get started. So we can at least tell them, oh, we have a tool set here that you can use to build a derivative. So the, the current way Debian well, this is very simplified version of, of what the Debian system is for, for building the whole thing. So uh, we have uh, developers there, which they work with software and prepare the packages and upload to some FTP place, which is the incoming queue. And then there is some... Uh, uh, it's called wanna build. It's a kind of a scheduler that picks up the, the source package and sends those to the build demons, and then it builds for many different architectures and do a lot of complex calculations. And once all the pa the binary packages come from the source packages, those are installed in some package repository, and from that package repository, the users get updates, or you can create the images or uh, installer media or whatever, and then uh, we have a happy penguin user family. So running a derivative is more or less, if you want to build everything from source, you probably want to set up that kind of pipeline. But there are many different tools 
that we can use. So, well, I, in the picture before, there is some missing bits which we do QA, which is quite important that verify and test the images or packages. So we have uh, tests at different levels. So we were pres wanting to present this that having a reference derivative, so nowadays there's no discussion, sources are kept in Git. I think maybe proposing Git to keep sources and then from Git, from a derivative Git, we can pull uh, changes and from Debian can see all the changes that are happening. If you use Git, I think there is a DEP, a proposal for a Git layout. It's called DEP 14. So if you use that, that will be, that could help understand how the layout, the guild layout is all structured. Then uh, we couldn't come up with some tools that we might need for branding or customize or sources. But if sometimes someone does some customizations or how do they apply apply their deltas, how do they deal with the their changes? We at Collabora we have we have based, we have modified uh, uh, Ubuntu version of Mergeomatic, but we have renamed it because now have more lines of code coming from us than from Ubuntu for our system, and we rename it, it's called Mergeomatic. So basically, it gets upstream package and compares to the package we have and figure out uh, diff and applies to the new version and sends to some build system, and then we build a new package, verify it works, and then we can add this to the new distribution so we don't lose the, the delta we had. So for building a derivative, there are many different options. It would be good if we discuss and come up with, with, a, with a good tool for uh, the reference implementation. So for uh, Collabora, we use uh, open build service which we are also working in the packages to get them in Debian. I'd like to thank Andrew Lee, which is doing a lot of work on that, on that side. Um, but other people might use SBuild or might have uh, some custom scripts, or maybe De Debian users want to build, but the setup is quite complicated. So I'm not sure if this is suitable for somebody starting a new derivative. So then when we have the binaries, we, those need to go into some repository. So we're proposing to use Ripper Pro, which is uh, to manage the archive. Uh, Debian uses DAC, but DAC is quite uh, specialized for Debian and the Swiss they have, and it has some hard codings and might be a bit overkill for a uh, new derivative. Yeah, please. Can you get the microphone, please? Okay. Um, yeah, we developed Tanglu, a uh, Debian derivative, doing almost that. Is it on? So, and we are using DAC, and we patched out all the d hard codings. So, using DAC is possible for a derivative, and <laughs> it's like, it's our solution for this because RepRepo wasn't able to handle more than thirty thousand packages, which we uh, have in Tanglu. So. And we also didn't manage to set up one build. I think that's impossible for any anyone <laughs> but Debian. Uh, we right now use a Debian also to uh, look at for packet launchers and for building things. But uh, because back in the day uh, using um, the open build code, it was impossible for us. And uh, yeah, we might reconsider that because we have a few issues with it. Uh, and building is actually the hardest part, and it could be optimized. But yeah, for like. Uh, for now, the devout stuff is quite, quite well working. Okay, yeah. Yeah, DAC is possible to use. I know there's a Linux. It's a distribution from Munich. And they also run DAC, and uh, they have been contributing a lot of code to DAC to make it w more generic. Yeah, so 
far sure. as I know, there's a Google Summer Code project merging stuff back from Linux to uh, OS or some other API merging it back to React Stream back. Yeah, right now, when we tried Webrefl at the beginning, it wasn't able to process the stuff uh, fast enough for us. So that was the only option, basically, for an archive the size of uh, a time loop or seven loops. Okay. So we, we handle around 2,000 source packages. With Webrefl, it works fine. And, but yeah, you have more, maybe that doesn't scale so well. I wonder wha what issue you have with RepoPro because <coughs> well, uh, in Kali Linux we use RepoPro as well and we have all Debian packages so it's about the same number but we do not build all packages. We only build uh, all about 400 Debian packages so uh, I don't know where is the issue. Is, is it in the processing of result of builds or? Uh <laughs> yeah, we are using the whole source packages. Is that the part which is taking too long? Integrating uh, results of builds, it seems weird. Yeah. Not only that, but the word from Apple. Well, get, uh, wait, get a microphone, please. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the pro processing is a problem because we rebuilt all packages and, um, yeah, also um, keeping track of those many packages in different suites was an issue with a web repo because we do releases and have the, have the stable suite and an incoming suite and like uh, multiple old stable suites and this amounts to like a massive amount of different packages uh, the system needs to keep track of. And because it, it was well working on Debian, we just went with DAC then and didn't pursue RepRepo further. So it might have been possible to work, the, work, the, work it out, but in the end, touching DAC was easier. And yeah, the FTP masters were of great help in helping us to set it up properly. <laughs> okay, it's true that uh, Repo Pro has, is probably not uh, always very uh, efficient, uh, but you have to take care uh, to, for, for example, e by, by default it always uh, exports all the files, including uh, contents files for each operation. So if you have multiple operation, or y you should really disable those and uh, do a single export uh, every hours or something like that. So you, you, you have to know it a bit and to walk around its limitation. And uh, we also have found a few issues that are annoying, uh, but uh, I disclose those in during my talk. So. Uh, you just <coughs> choose your trade-offs with these kinds of tools. Yeah, right. For us, it was quite nice that w by using DAC, it, we also had integration with Fibne and all the other tools, and we just needed to well, figure out how to use it. And uh, with RepRepo, we would have been, it would have been more work to make it work. Yeah, right. That's uh, one of the missing feature for me. It's a uh, Britney integration, which we do hacked in. All right. So I think it, it, it would be good to dis keep discussing this, at least on the mailing list, and get gathering all the people that it's not possible to get here and try to come up with some, so, some sort of a standard tools to propose from a Debian mindset. It doesn't mean that you have to change your derivative, but I mean, you're, you're free to use whatever you want or whatever suits you most, but from like having a reference could be really, really good for Debian, I believe. And I wouldn't mind to, to work on that. So another, another bit, once you have the binary archives, then you create some images or some installer. So there are also many options available. And I referred to uh, Rick Volpio did a presentation last year about, he, he showed in Debian archives there were like 15 or 16 different tools to build images. They all do the same. And when somebody wants to build a new image, it comes with a new script. So it's just, there's no, one tool that we can use. There's also a difference between if you want to have an image that you can DD on disk, on an SD card, or you may want to have some installer media, or you want to have a live image. So it depends what your derivative uh, want. You, you need a tool to, for the images. I know the Debian CD team is now working on live wrapper. 
and that might come up, that might, come, that might be a, a solution for building images, like for, for cloud images, and it's not ready yet, but it's something that we might want to have a look in the, in the future, because if official Debian is doing this, and it's currently working on that, then maybe derivatives can start using this and adapting for their, their needs. Also, light build is, is highly used by many derivatives, uh, building live media, but it's orphaned now. I think there's no maintainership, so it's kind of, light build has been working really well. I'd like to thank Daniel for that. But now we are kind of uh, miss, missing this. And then once we have the images, we need to validate those. That's very important, and run some QA. So there are very interesting talks from Antonio Terceiro about uh, their CI, continuous integration with auto package tests. And there is also a Lava framework for Linaro guides, which it's, it's packaged in Debian and you can install, but this is more to deploy on, on real hardware and run some tests. There are uh, other frameworks. You can run some scripts from Jenkins to do some validation. I don't know if people here, derivatives, run any other tools. It would be helpful to know. But... <coughs> Uh, coming with uh, some tools for the reference derivative uh, could be uh, also good. And in this case, I would like to uh, CI uses auto package tests, and they this is standardized form of a test. And Lava uses uh, YAML files for running these tests, and then maybe other Jenkins have you prepare a script for another test. So you have different frameworks and different formats. So maybe using all of them the same format could benefit us all. So from a derivative, you work on some test, and maybe other derivatives can benefit from, from that test. I think the auto package test is probably uh, a good solution, but we would have to teach these frameworks, how to use it. Uh, can you pass the microphone there to, to Neil, please? Yeah, just a note on the auto package test because that is very based on an installed package. It'll test the installed package the way that the installed package has had its unit tests set up. It isn't um, designed to actually test lots and lots of different packages in one go for one particular image or one particular set of binaries. It'll test one package according to what's, well, what's actually been asked for, only, and it only tests the operation of that package, not how that package interacts with other packages. So trying to harmonize all these kinds of things is, is sounds like idealistic to me because they actually have different objectives. They're trying to do different things. Um, and you need to find a set of tools that can help people to do the particular kind of testing they need, and that can be multiple tools. But trying to do one tool that does everything uh, is where Lava in particular got into problems in the early stages of the design, and that's why we go into this redesign, because if you try to do too many things, you end up with the tool itself getting in the way of those people who are trying to do it for, for um, uh, a particular task. Right. So we, I understand we have different kind of tests that you can do uh, source code, unit testing, you can do package level testing, or you can do system uh, level testing. But at least having some common format, some standardized that we can share, that, yeah, it's an ideal, but. <coughs> so I don't know, after QA, I don't know if, yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to pass on an idea. Uh, I was wondering uh, also about uh, the problem of testing interaction between multiple packages, so you can't do that uh, really in the auto package test, but we could maybe create 
a separate repository uh, of maybe fake source packages, which <coughs> would specifically have uh, the purpose of testing a common use case. I mean, uh, uh, for example, uh, Linux, Apache, MySQL combination, as usual, uh, running a, a, a PHP application uh, and testing this. Uh, it's a way to test multiple packages, which is doable because uh, what auto package tests have dependencies, so you can install whatever you want. And uh, it could be a separate repository. Uh, and I believe that uh, CA or at least uh, the code running net can easily handle uh, only a subset of package or a dedicated repository. So we could have uh, something on the side or which would do some, some sort of uh, integration test if you want. Okay. So I don't know, after QA, if you validate the image, and I don't know if somebody else does something else or just profits and, and benefits from, from their derivative, or enjoy it. So, so I'd like to thank uh, Collabora and, and Valve because they've, they've been sponsoring Debian and also like to thank Debian and DevConf people. So if you have any questions or answers or some more discussion, I think we have a few, few minutes left. Yeah, around 10 minutes. So just feel free to talk. And yeah, I'd also like to invite you to the next talk of uh, Kali Linux and then afterwards, I think there's a, a, a Lin, um, HP Enterprise Linux distribution presentation. So you, you, we might see what they, they have to say. So thanks. So you mentioned one of the reasons in your list of reasons of why people would choose derivative or start one uh, was concerns about licensing. Um, obviously, there's different forms of that. One is if you want to include proprietary software in the default distribution. Uh, that's been a common reason people make derivatives. My bigger concern now is uh, derivatives that come that are now violating the GPL, which is different than just providing proprietary software. It's actually violating a free software license. So I wa was wondering if you had any thoughts about how the Debian community should deal with downstream derivatives <coughs> that are violating the GPL and, and what we should do about it socially. Okay, that point came up from uh, last year panel, and I think it was uh, it was introduced by uh, Buxi Raphael, and that was because uh, some uh, he runs a penetration testing distribution. So some of the uh, software is is uh, built to to do an attack or something bad to the system. So that <coughs> might have some license. It might not be a good package that good that it's a good fit for Debian. So that mostly came up from that. So going to the binary blob discussion, uh, we just need to, the, I think we had this GP, GPL violations. We just, if we find someone violating the GPL, there's not much we can do to just point it out and try uh, to fix their way if they don't know. And if they don't fix it because they're able, then if you want to take them to court, then that's the process. Right, and, and as you probably know, that's a lot of the work that I do. Uh, but I'm wondering if there's a social component to it as well. Should, should Debian have a different attitude towards derivatives that violate the GPL? Um, or, or take some sort of position to try and put social pressure on them rather than legal pressure uh, to get them to stop? Uh, I'm just wondering if you think that would be appropriate or should we explore that? I think it's not, it's not our business. So they. If somebody uses a derivative and do whatever they do, they want to do, I'm not sure from from Debian point of view what what can we do. I mean, yeah, we can decide that uh, you know we don't we aren't so helpful towards a, a dist distribution that uh, we feel is not up uh, not complying with its obligations. Uh. We could add a note in the census. Uh -huh. or, or simply like remove it from the census. You know, we don't, I don't know. 
actually we have um, well the, the only place where we sort of advertise our derivative it, it's in the census it's not very visible it's mostly a, uh, an internal tool to track uh, derivatives but uh, instead of trying to blame the bad the bad derivatives we could do the opposite trying to promote the good ones uh, having a sort of uh, Debian blessed derivative uh, because well uh, y you follow the rules uh, you clearly separate free from non free you and uh, you give back and you're open and that kind of stuff so I would rather go in this direction there rather than in the opposite one yeah I like that yeah I actually completely agree with that idea and it it correlates with something I've been sitting here thinking about for the last few minutes you talked about the idea of a reference distribution. And my brain's been sort of revolting against that from the idea that anything you try to create as a reference that isn't actually itself being regularly used tends to not stay fresh and current and, and sort of in good condition for long. So the notion of you know, maybe identifying some subset of the available derivatives that seem to not only sort of be adhering philosophically to or, or morally to the right behaviors, but which um, exhibit sort of good mechanisms or good practices for building a derivative could be an interesting alternative to creating some separate reference derivative. I don't know, just thoughts. Right, so I, I was more focused on the tools and the tool set of the toolkit we need to provide for derivatives and maybe well, if then do the real, uh, real derivative. And yeah, I you're, understand. You're right. Like uh, if you if you produce something you don't use, it will it'll get rotten very quickly. Yeah, uh, I've been very bothered uh, by the controversy with the Ubuntu trademark recently. Like we provide for Ubuntu uh, something that they uh, distribution that they can. Uh, make money out of and then whenever someone wants to make a Ubuntu derivative they have to either ask permission or remove Ubuntu everywhere. Uh, to me that's not a correct behavior because they how can I say uh, they are twisting the GPL license doing that by using trademark laws issue uh, lo uh, tra trademark loopholes so I wonder if Debian could do something about that to make to enforce the fact that we want people to be able to uh, do derivative of our derivatives. Is there a? Is, uh, I'm not a lawyer, but would there be a way to do that? Uh, I believe there's Ubuntu people in the room. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm sure I, I got you you guys angry about about me saying that. I'm sorry for it. But I really feel uncomfortable with the current situation. My company had to remove Ubuntu from Debian change logs and such, and it's very painful. Yeah, so if I can echo that, we make a Ubuntu derivative, and I love all the Ubuntu derivatives for all the cool stuff they've made, but when I contacted Canonical Legal, we were also told to rebuild all binaries. And it's not feasible, so we're rebasing on Debian now. Yeah. Yeah, a Steam, a Steam case was similar. They were based on Ubuntu in Italy, and then they moved to the, to Debian as well. Wha okay, so what? I don't, well, what's like the moral thing that's going on here? Like, so Debian's Debian's made up of free software, right? So people can take your free software, and they can do things with it which you don't like, and you know that's part of sort of what you understand. Within yeah, right. Within, as long as they're complying with your licenses, right? But. They can take your software, and they can do things, and you might not like what they're doing, but you've made free software, so they can do that, right? So, like, what, like, what would you want Debian to do here? What, like, do you want to restrict what people can do with your software if you don't like what they're doing? Like, I don't, I don't really. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying that. Oh yeah. I mean, that's the the this is the license. The license yeah, yeah but they're already violating oh. the license, aren't they? Exactly. Like, well, if you're saying if there's a license violation, then you should deal with that. But I think people are saying that. Debian should try and find some extra, like, way to deal with, with like uses of its software by derivatives that it doesn't like. Like, I, d I just don't understand like the philosophical or like no, moral uh, like um, arguments that's being deployed. It's not a problem of licenses. It's no, a problem of trademarks. 
Okay, Canonical is enforcing the Ubuntu trademark here. Title to use its trademark so, in that way. What's, what's Debian's problem with that? The problem is that I feel uncomfortable that a company takes our packages, rebrand them, and they then say you can't reuse that and modify it and, and use the four freedoms of GPL. There is more than 300 derivatives based on Ubuntu, and all of them have applied to use a different trademark instead of Ubuntu or Ubuntu. And all of them have been, there is a community process to apply for it. And you shouldn't need to apply, it. that's the point. You okay. shouldn't need to apply. You should be able to do it without applying. In Debian, you don't need to apply, and that's why people come to Debian. Yeah. And I guess it's very good that Debian does that, right? But different projects are different. Can someone get the mic up there? I think people have conflated a couple of different issues. Um, the Ubuntu trademark policy um, was violating the GPL for quite a long period of time. Um, it is now in compliance as far as I know. Um, so so that, that's, that's its own issue. And we can argue about the annoyances that the downstream Ubuntu community has about the existing trademark policy, but it's not a GPL violation anymore. Uh, so it's not an issue of the, of the licenses of Debian being violated. It's more of an of a annoyance by the jury raising about work and so forth, which is a different issue. Um, I'm much more concerned about the existing GPL violations that continue, which Ubuntu is also in other ways violating the GPL. Um, those are something we should think about. Just like when the trademark policy was violating GPL, I think Debian should have, it would have been useful for Debian to take a stronger stand about that. Um, and now that there are other GPL violations, I think it would be good for Debian to take a stand on those. Um, or, or in some way. I, I like this idea over here of, of trying to promote the good ones more and, and making a list of people who actually are compliant with the GPL. Um, positive reinforcement's better than, than uh, negative reinforcement, certainly. But, uh, but I, th I think it's important not to conflate all these issues because, because it's a question of, of license compliance versus non-license compliance, and then it's also a question of, of who's downstream from whom and has to comply with whose policies. So I, I, I just see that being conflated a lot here. That concerns me. So we have a minute left. If somebody wants to add something. If not, but yeah. Okay. Um, not to the licensing is issue, but for the reference distribution again. Um, I think that one of the biggest problems for a derivative is that uh, there are sometimes in some areas no really good tools to do a certain task. For example, building packages uh, in a distributed way was really not possible in a, on the scale we wanted it to do until we found Debil, uh, Debil. And uh, yeah, because tools like uh, what Fedora uses are obviously for Fedora packages, then the open build service was uh, almost impossible to set up for on Debian machines because it was developed by uh, OpenSUSE for their needs mostly. I think it might be better now. And yeah, WannaBuild is so deeply integrated with Debian infrastructure that it was unusable. So uh, we had really a big problem with uh, building packages initially. Also with creating live systems, there is no, I think it's not the thing that, the re uh, that there needs to be a reference distribution, but the tools would need to be much better and much easier to use and much better documented. That's actually the more important part than, uh, than we, what we currently have. Like creating good tools and documenting how to create a derivative. That will be, in my opinion, far more useful than creating another derivative. Yeah, the, the idea was exactly that. That document the tools and provide tools. And it was more on the, that line. We've been talking about tools rather than derivatives. But then yeah, I misunderstood I, I the case, I think. I think we, we can prepare a summary of all this, send to the mailing list, and maybe we can uh, pick up from there and continue this conversation. So I'd like to thank you all for being here, and we'll continue next talk with uh, Kali Linux. So thanks.